Hi everyone, this is Raphael from SideQuest Studios. Now let's move on to another really important part of the game, the battle system. Before heading into the action, let me give you a brief introduction about how battles are triggered, since this is another really unique element of Rainbow Moon. During exploration, you will come across a lot of nasty foes that roam around the planet. Each enemy that you see on the world map represents a group of monsters. Based on the information attached to this enemy, you can easily determine how many monsters you are going to encounter, as well as their highest level. Simply collide with one of these monsters and the battle gets started. Alternatively, you will also frequently receive random encounter invitations. Random encounters are completely optional and can be disregarded if you choose to. However, if you have just wiped out all the enemies in one region or simply wish to raise your level, you can fight these optional battles. Now, finally, let's get back to the actual battle system. All battles take place on a grid-sized map and are completely turn-based. That's right, just like the good old days. No stress, no chaos. Take your time to observe the situation and make the right move. Up to three of your party members will engage into battle against a large variety of evil creatures. Early on in the game, you begin with Baldrin, the main hero of our story. He's a well-balanced melee fighter and will receive a healthy mix of offensive and supporting skills throughout the game. By defeating enemies in battle, you will gain experience points, level up and receive rainbow pearls and other rewards that will eventually help you make your character stronger. I'm going to tell you more about this a little later on, but let's keep our focus on the battle system for now. During battles, you have a number of commands at your disposal, and I'm now going to demonstrate some of the most important ones to you. Move allows you to walk on the battle map field by field. Attack lets you execute a short or long-range attack command, and defend is a great command to end your turn and make you less vulnerable to enemy attacks. If you select item from your battle menu, you can use any item that's currently in your inventory, such as healing potions. Whenever you feel that you are on the losing streak, you can choose the escape command and abandon the battle during your turn. Probably the most important command that you will execute a lot of times during battle is the skill command. At this time, Baldrin is already capable of casting the Shield Bash and Earth Crusher skills. Shield Bash is a very basic skill that targets just a single enemy. It's more powerful than a normal attack, but there's really nothing more to it. Executing skills will cost you mana points, or in short MP, and Shield Bash is on the cheap side, costing just 2 MP to execute. Earth Crusher, on the other hand, has the ability to hit two targets at once. On top of that, there is also a 25% chance to bound the enemies. Once an enemy is bound, he cannot move for a few turns, which gives you a better chance to avoid damage from him. Casting skills can be a very useful tool, and what you have just seen is really just the beginning. In total, there are over 120 different skills that you will come across. Apart from attack skills, there are also support skills such as healing your characters and various other skills like analyzing enemies or even casting light and food. Further negative conditions that you can inflict on others include poisoning your enemies, slowing them down, dazing them and many others. Whenever you hit an enemy, the inflicted damage is based on two systems. The first one is called Bias System and the second one is the Weapons Affinity System. Each party member, as well as each enemy type, have a bias with a tendency to be more physical, balanced or magical fighter. Depending on the bias tendency of your party member, as well as the bias of your enemy, attacks in battle will be more or less effective. For example, a physical character will inflict greater damage on a magical enemy and vice versa. At the same time, a physical character is also more vulnerable to attacks from enemies with strong magical bias values. However, if you want to completely maximize your damage output, you also need to take the weapons affinity system into consideration. In Rainbow Moon, there are six different weapon classes. Swords, bows, lances, axes, staffs and slingshots. Each character and each monster belongs to one of these six classes. Each weapon class has a counterpart that it is particularly strong or particularly weak against. During each attack, 
there is a distinctive rock-paper-scissor mechanism in place that is indicated by colored damage numbers. Baldwin, for example, belongs to the sword class and is most effective when he fights enemies that belong to the bow class, increasing his damage by nearly 40%. Both of these two systems, the bias and the weapon affinities, work alongside. That means that with a little bit of experience and practice, you can cause extra damage of up to 200%. I know this may all sound a bit complicated right now, but don't worry. When playing Rainbow Moon, you will get into it really quickly and master it at the time it matters most. Just a final word about the battle system. By defeating different monsters, your best tree automatically expands. Here you can find everything about their weapon classes, which skills they can execute, the items they will drop and so on. The more often you defeat the same type of enemy, the more information you will gather about it. This can, for example, be very helpful when searching for special materials for enhancing your gear. That's all for now. I really hope that you have enjoyed this first glimpse at what Rainbow Moon has to offer. Make sure to watch out for Rainbow Moon on PlayStation Store this July.